Hi, I'm BJ Oslin. I'm Garrett Lewis from Piperworks Brewing Company, opening here in Chicago later this year. We're brewing a special summer ale for Chicago Magazine. It's a recreation of an English summer ale brewed with coriander and citrus zest to be a perfect quenching summertime beer. All right, we're getting ready to mash in. This is the process of mixing the grains with the hot water that we prepared earlier. Um, we're doing this so that enzymes in the malt will convert to sugars, um, and that will give us something to ferment once we add our yeast later in the process. So what we're gonna do here, the object here, is to mix this in slowly and thoroughly so that we don't get clumps of grain. So we're mixing in a combination of Maris Otter Pale Ale Malt, which is an English malt. We're also using 20% wheat malt, which is gonna give us some lightness, it's gonna give us some body. And we're also mixing in some acidulated malt. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this rest for approximately 60 minutes. That's gonna give time for the enzymes to convert the starches to sugars. Initially, when I got my job at Westlake View Liquors, I was into home brewing and I had, made a decide, I had decided to change my career and wanted to get closer to the industry, so I got a job at Westlake View. It's where I met Garrett, and you know, we were both beer geeks. I was a home brewer, and one thing led to another, and we were like, hey, you know, why don't we start a brewery? So after working at Westlake View Liquors, basically, we, we found an apprenticeship with Destroza. Um, or distruce, where we got a chance to go live and work in Belgium for three months. And then ever since that, we came back to the U U.S. and we've been working on recipes, getting our business plan together, creating image for our company, and seeking out uh, a location to actually call home. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to start what's called vorloffing. Um, that's a fancy way of saying that we're going to recirculate the wort, which is the, the sweet liquid that we've created just now. The purpose of this is we're going to be slowly filtering out this liquid that we've created and putting it back on top so that the grains that are in there act as a filter so that we get a really nice clear product. It is a little less expensive to do home brewing, but it's also very time consuming. So, you know, it's a trade off there, but really it's ultimately about, you know, drinking what you made and the fact that you get to choose what you're making so the product is yours. I think the funnest part of this whole process of creating your brand and really, you know, we don't even think of it as a brand, we think of it as kind of a lifestyle. This is what we want to do every day for the rest of our life is that, uh, you know, our, our uh, logo and our the labels and everything is just as important as the beer we make. To a great degree, it's, it's a sense of honor, you know, you're crafting something. It's, you know, it's like cooking. You know, brewing is very much like cooking, only it takes six weeks. <laughs> But, you know, in the end, you know, you're really happy to show off. You want your friends to drink the beer that you made because, you know, it's exciting. You're, you're creating something from nothing, essentially. Okay, so over the last hour or so, we've collected the wort from our mash, after which we cleaned out the kettle and we transferred the wort back into the kettle. Now we've brought that wort up to a boil, and what we're going to do now is we're going to add our bittering addition of hops. Um, we're going to boil this wort for approximately 60 minutes. What that's going to do is we're going to sterilize the wort and it's going to give a time, us time to extract bitterness from the hops themselves. So we're coming to the end of our boil. It's been about 58 minutes. Whereas the first hops that we added were for bittering, these next hops that we're going to add are going to be more for flavor and aroma. We'll also be adding some fresh citrus zest. Um, this is a combination of tangerine, grapefruit, orange, lemon, and lime. Okay, so we're, we're putting in one last load of hops. This is a really large charge of hops or a large amount of hops that we're adding. There's going to be an additional four ounces of hops. Um, this is a New Zealand strain called Nelson Savin. Something different about Pipeworks is, um, especially initially, we're not going to be focusing on a flagship beer or a brand. Rather, we're, we're approaching this much like home brewers do, brewing whatever we want to brew when we want to brew it. Right now, we're getting pretty close to actually signing a lease, so we're looking forward to having a home for Pipeworks finally. Um, it's really important for us to be a Chicagoland location. We don't want to be out in the burbs. We want to be something that's accessible you know, for people in the city to ride their bikes up to and be able to purchase beer directly at the brewery. And you know, we want to be part of this great city's community. So right now we're transferring the beer into our fermenter. In this case, it's a glass carboy. We're chilling the wort as quickly as we can, so to about a temperature of 72 degrees in this case. We're also running a small amount of oxygen through the wort. Um, oxygen is important during the initial stages of fermentation. It promotes healthy yeast reproduction, um, so you don't get as many off flavors in your beer. So now we're getting ready to pitch our yeast. Um, in this case, we're using a dry yeast, um, which is Sapphile SO4. This is an English ale strain, um, same as the Fuller's strain, if you've ever had the uh, Fuller's London Pride or other Fuller's product from England. And we're just going to go ahead and pour that right on top. Spray it with acid to make sure it's all clean, and then we're going to seal it up. That's it. <laughs> so here we have our finished wort, which now is going to go down into the cellar where fermentation will take place. 
Um, there the yeast are going to turn sugars into alcohol and CO2 over the next seven days. Um, after that time, we'll let the beer condition cold for an additional two weeks, and then we'll keg the beer, and it'll be ready to serve in approximately four or five weeks. Um, so I hope you'll join us, Pipeworks, in Chicago Magazine, and get a taste of this wonderful beer that we've made today.